Dylan Schumacher with Citadel Defense, and today we're back with another edition of Tactical Book Review. Today's book is Resistance to Tyranny by Joseph Martino. I don't know how to pronounce that. Joseph P. Martino. This is a little bit thicker of a volume, as you can tell. I read this book because I came across it on Reed Hendricks' channel, uh, and he had recommended it a couple times, and if Reed Hendricks tells you to read a book, it's probably worth a book checking out. So I picked it up, read through it, and basically what this thing is, is a primer on how to run a resistance movement. Um, I mean, they cover everything in here. Uh, from, I'm trying to find a table of contents. Here we go. Oh, 2010 is when this book came out, and it was in memory of Patrick Henry. God bless America. Uh, so, I mean, they cover everything with why armed resistance to probability of success to weapons caching to booby traps, logistics, training, secure camps, encryption and codes, getting your story out, attack and defense, ambushes, sniping, assassination, sabotage, raids, strategic and tactical intelligence, counterintelligence. I mean, it keeps going, okay? There's like 30 some chapters in here and all, and it just runs the gamut. And it's a primer. So what it does is it gives a little bit of information just to kind of get your toes wet on each one of those topics. And then at the end of each chapter, he has lists of other books that you can read for further reading to kind of dig into that topic more. Uh, I really like the way this book is laid out in, in that sense. And that, like I said, it's just enough to wet your palate. Uh, and then it gives you further resources if you want to dive deeper into any one of those given topics. So that that's a really, really cool design. I love that this book is written from a perspective of liberty and freedom in America and what I mean by that is he wrote this book as a, as a guide to resisting against tyranny right it's in the title uh, and, and I really really appreciate that like this guy is an American and he believes in liberty and freedom and our original revolution and uh, I'm a big fan of anyone who's a big fan of that right so I if you would read this book right if that's something that you might foresee in our future in the long run, uh, this would be a good primer to kind of get your palate wet on all of that. If you're interested in that kind of thing, I would recommend it to you. If you're not, I'd say pass, right? There, there's, there's no reason for you to pick it up at that point because that's obviously what the book is about. Uh, well, well written. Like I said, I really like the format of how he kind of gives you a little bit on each. The favorite part of the book, honestly, for me, was the opening chapter. Uh, because what he does is he goes through uh, all the casualties of war in the 20th century, which most deadly century in American history, or in world history, if you didn't know that, okay? Uh, and he compares it to all the people that were killed by governments, right? Their own governments, how many people governments killed. And it's not even close. <laughs> uh, war killed about 35.7 million people in the 20th century. Governments, not in wars, killed 119.4 million. 119 to 35, not even close. And so he talks about how governments can be the biggest killer, right? Because they get out of control. And most of that, by the way, was communist uh, governments, of course, obviously. Out of that 119 million, 95 million of them were communist deaths, right? So uh, communism, hey, just hasn't worked right. We just gotta try it again. Anyone who says that, I don't read a history book. Just one, just one history book. Point is, uh, I, I think that's a very valuable uh, information to have. And uh, he goes through how disarmament led to the mass um, slaughter and massacres and genocides in a lot of places, right? First they came for the guns, then they, or the next government in that same country, uh, came in and genocide happened because the population was disarmed and unable to defend themselves. So I really like his history on that. And those are just, just some short chapters. I really like his perspective on that. I like where he's coming from when he writes this book. He talks about just war theory, which is, is super helpful and, and how that's important. Uh, how you fight is as important as why you fight is as important as uh, the method, or should, how you fight is as important as why you're fighting. And if you fight wrongly, it's going to ruin your eventual victory, right? If you fight a good war wrongly, like let's say car bombs and blowing up civilians, right? We call those people terrorists. Uh, if you ever do succeed in, in your goals, it's not exactly creating a good environment after the fact. 
And I appreciate that because I, I think a lot of people can just be like, well, they're the bad guys and we're just going to kill them. We're going to do whatever we have to do to win. And they're not thinking we're fighting to establish liberty. We have long-term goals in mind. And there's going to be a peace after. And how are we going to live after? And he talks about that. And I really appreciate that. So, uh, big fan of this book. If, if just for those few little chapters... But uh, like I said, if, if you're interested in resisting tyranny and you're interested in liberty, then I guess I would recommend this book to you. It can get a little long because it's like 400 some pages and you can just skip chapters that aren't interesting. But in general, I like that it, it just gives you enough to wet your palate on each topic. Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. Do brave deeds and endure.